When we learned about different aircraft structures, we saw that the number of ribs in a wing can have a huge effect on how the skin buckles. But what we also saw was that even with several ribs present, buckling was not fully prevented. This got me thinking, will buckling always cause structural damage? And are there even situations where buckling isn't a problem? At first, it seems like the bending and displacements that result from buckling are so severe that a structure couldn't possibly recover. Therefore, my mini hypothesis is that buckling will always cause structural damage. When I think of buckling, I usually think of someone crushing a soda can down into a tiny plate. At first, it buckles. Then, as more force is applied, the buckling worsens, and taking off that load won't make it go back to its original shape. But then I found something interesting. NASA's Large Cylinder Buckling Tests. To see how rocket fuel tanks buckle under the large compression forces of liftoff, NASA created full-scale models of made of an aluminum lithium composite material and applied nearly 1 million pounds of force to the cylinder. And with a loud thud, the material buckles, creating a sine wave-like pattern all over the structure. That's quite a lot of deformation, so obviously it'll stay that way, right? But if we look, as the load is removed from the cylinder, and with another loud thud, it pops right back into its original shape. So what's going on here? Let's think back to our basic definitions of material behavior. There are two types of deformation, plastic and elastic. Below a certain load limit, deformation is reversible, and a structure will return to its original shape after the load is removed. But above that limit, the deformation becomes irreversible. As it turns out, those same principles apply to buckling. As long as loading does not exceed the elastic limit, any deformation due to buckling will not be permanent. To see this in action, we have a transparent cylinder made from a stiff plastic capped with two metal plates. Turning the screw on the top applies a compression force. And when you get to just the right loading, the cylinder buckles and you can see the ripples in the plastic. Now let's unload it and see what happens. The cylinder goes right back to normal. I don't see any evidence that the cylinder was ever compressed. Neat, huh? So going back to our hypothesis, buckling will always cause structural damage, we can now say that that is false. We have seen that buckling can be either elastic or plastic, just like deformation due to bending or torsion. Of course, this still means that aerospace designers have to be careful not to exceed the elastic region. But knowing a structure can handle this and take on more load after buckling can lead to lighter, more efficient structures.